Hi, this is Dan Steele with the State School Directors Association with your weekly legislative update for the week ending Friday, March 5th. Today is the, the final legislative self-imposed cutoff date before the official end of session, which occurs uh, next Thursday, March 11th. Today, by, by 5 o'clock today, all bills have to be out of their opposite house in order to remain alive, meaning that all Senate bills need to be out of the House and all House bills need to be out of the Senate in order to remain alive. Any bills except for budget bills or necessary bills to implement the budget, if they aren't passed out of the opposite house by tonight, five o'clock, they do die. Uh, there's been a significant amount of action on the floor this week uh, and also a pretty significant amount of time spent in the respective political caucuses as legislators attempt to pass out legislation and then also hammer out negotiations on a final budget to make sure that they can actually get out on time again by Thursday, March 11th. I want to talk about the budget in a minute, but before we do that, talk about some of the major issues that we've been following. The first is a package of bills, House Bill 2776 and Senate Bill 6760. These are the Quality Education Council related bills coming from the Funding Formula Technical Working Group that would implement a new prototypical school funding model that was actually uh, called for in House Bill 2261, last year's basic education finance reform. Uh, 2776 is actually passed out of the Senate just last night. 6760 continues to await action in the House. And now that the, the House bill is passed out of the Senate, there are some questions about whether or not they're gonna move the Senate bill or if they're just gonna continue negotiations on 2776 but we'll find out again by this evening. <clears throat> uh, both of these bills are in fact in, uh, funded in each of the respective budgets, uh, so one of the bills uh, is assumed to be uh, adopted by the, the end of the session. Second major issue, Senate Bill 6696. Remember, this is the race to the top legislation uh, that is supposed to enhance our application to the federal government to get us some, some of these race to the top uh, grants. Um, <clears throat> this, this bill would do a number of different things, impose a new teacher and principal evaluation system, make changes to teacher tenure, there's also some teacher certification changes in there. Uh, but of course, the major thing that we've been watching is the State Board of Education's accountability plan is encompassed in this bill. That bill is actually passed out of the Senate, awaits action in the House, and we've been waiting the last couple of days, uh, assuming it would come up at any time. And finally, just in the last day or so, there are some finally is some questions uh, about whether or not the bill actually will be adopted. Uh, we think it probably will be, uh, but there are finally some questions about whether or not uh, the legislature is willing to move this bill. So with that, I want to talk about some of the budget issues. Uh, as you, you're aware that both the House and the Senate have introduced uh, revenue packages as well as uh, budget packages. Uh, last, uh, the last issue of impact, issue number six, details some of the K-12 items, the majority of the K-12 items in both of those budgets, so I encourage you to take a look at that. But what we want to do today is just mention some of the, the changes that were made uh, since that issue of impact was uh, completed. In the House, there was a reduction of about $25 million in the K-6 Alternative Learning Experience Program. And when I say reduction, it was actually an elimination of the K-6 program. That funding has actually been restored in the House budget before it passed out of the House Ways and Means Committee. So it looks like that money will remain in a final budget. <clears throat> On the Senate side, there are two major things that you need to be aware of. First off, there was about $25 million added to the Senate budget uh, to increase local effort assistance from the current 12% to 14%. That was already done in the House budget, so now that's in both budgets. There is the assumption uh, that there will be one of those bills, either House Bill 2893 or Senate Bill 6518, which would increase the levy lid across the board by 4% and also increase local effort assistance from the current 12% to 14%. Uh, it's not a done deal yet, but because the money is in both budgets, it is assumed that that's going to happen uh, by the end of the session. The second major thing that occurred in the Senate Ways and Means Committee before they adopted their budget, uh, there was a, an addition of language for a redistricting commission uh, it's similar to House Bill 2616. Remember, to House Bill 2616 would have imposed a, or started a, a redistricting commission to look at the organization of school districts and ask for a reduction of school districts. 
<clears throat> this language is now in the Senate budget uh, for a two-year commission to actually look at the district uh, school district organization and again call for a reduction. <clears throat> the original House Bill 2616 said there could be no more than 150 school districts. That number is not in the Senate budget, but there is language again establishing that this commission to look at <clears throat> the reorganization of school districts and also ESDs. So I want to talk about, again, the, the revenue package that both the House and the Senate have introduced. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Senate has a, a package of bills, Senate Bill 6873, Senate Bill 6874, and six, excuse me, Senate Bill 6875. These three bills would uh, eliminate a number of tax loopholes or tax exemptions. There would also be an increase in the cigarette tax. And one of the major issues, there would be a temporary three-tenths of a cent increase in the state sales tax. <clears throat> the House has a package uh, in one bill, House Bill 3191, and this bill has actually been heard in the House Finance Committee and has actually passed out of that committee and awaits action by the full House. I should mention the three bills in the Senate have been heard, but they haven't yet moved out of committee. The House Bill 3191, would actually have similar tax loophole uh, repeals or el eliminations of tax exemptions, but it also has a menu of tax increases and doesn't include a sales tax increase. So there are significant differences between the tax packages and the House and the Senate, and this is one of the things that the legislature is going to have to grapple with in order to adopt a budget and get out of here on time uh, by next week. I want to also mention yesterday there was a new plan put on the table by the Senate Senate Bill 6250. What this would do, it would impose a high earner's income tax uh, for those individuals who are making over $200,000 or $300,000 for heads of household or $400,000 for uh, couples. <clears throat> the strategy apparently in the Senate, at least as described by Senate Majority Leader Lisa Brown, would be to immediately impose the three-tenths of a cent temporary increase in the sales tax but send out a referendum to the people and ask them if they want to do three different things. Number one, impose this high earner's income tax. Second, repeal the temporary increase in the sales tax and then also have a reduction as a third part of the base sales tax. Um, so it's interesting that at this late date a brand new package has come forward. Uh, that was heard in the Senate Ways and Means Committee yesterday, Thursday. Uh, there is uh, a guess that it may actually try to be adopted out of the Ways and Means Committee later today, uh, but we'll wait and see. But again, there's a number of tax packages on the table, very different, um, and it's actually holding up the process. There's a number of folks in the House that want to have a higher increase in, in the, a sales tax or tax, a tax package in order to fund a higher budget. There's folks in the Senate that don't like the sales tax at all. So bottom line, we're talking about the legislative arithmetic. In order to adopt a budget and tax package, you need 25 votes in the Senate, 50 votes in the House, and that's really uh, what the legislature's grappling with, the majority of the issue right now, <laughs> trying to figure out how to get out of here in less than seven days adopt a package and be, be done by sine die Thursday, March 11th. So with that, there is less than a week left to go, but there still is an opportunity to impact this process. Continue to, to be active with your legislators. Let them know what your opinion are on these uh, bills and also the budget issues. Uh, and we'll be back with you next week, either to wrap up the legislative session or to talk about a special session. That's to be determined, uh, but we'll be back with you. So thank you for your attention. We'll see you again.